Joining me now is Nora Erekat, an associate professor in the Department of Africana Studies at the Program in Criminal Justice at Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you for having me. So the South Africa versus Israel genocide case begins today at the International Court of Justice with South Africa accusing Israel of genocide in the Gaza war and asking the court to impose emergency measures to suspend Israel's military campaign. Israel says that's atrocious and preposterous. What can we expect to come out of this hearing, do you think? And how significant is it that this is being brought by South Africa against U.S.-backed Israel? I think it's an incredibly uh, significant moment in history where South Africa, which overcame its own history of apartheid, is now leading the majority of the world that is opposed to Israel's war uh, on Palestinians, its genocidal campaign now for over three months, and is leading that majority to retrieve, to, uh, to get an, uh, provisional measures at the International Court of Justice in order to force Israel to stop its military campaign, to impose a permanent ceasefire that has not been forthcoming within the UN Security Council because of the US's use of its veto therein, defying the, the will of the majority of the world, specifically 153 states who have called for, per, uh, for a permanent ceasefire, um, have been overridden by that veto. And now what we see in this, this move to the ICJ is both a move to impose that ceasefire as well as a move to end genocide and have accountability for it. And the ICJ, also called the World Court, is the highest United Nations legal body to deal with disputes like this, but it has no enforcement authority, meaning, of course, even if it fines for South Africa, it can't enforce that finding. So what's achieved exactly? Well, the ICJ, which is a principal organ of the United Nations, is the only court that can uh, settle disputes between states. And here the dispute is over the Genocide Convention. South Africa is alleging that Israel has committing genocide and or failing to prevent a genocide, documenting that in an 84-page statement that has 30 pages of details, of acts, details like uh, the, the war on children, now 9,600 children killed in three months, an average of 100 each day. What the Security General, um, Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, has described now Gaza as a graveyard uh, for children. In response, Israel is saying that this is just the gruesome outcome of war. And I think here these implications are not only implications for Palestinians and for Israel, but really for the future of the world. If Israel can actually commit genocide and call it mere warfare or an exception, then the rest of the world is at severe harm and danger. So even if the International Court of Justice cannot impose an immediate um, ceasefire to prevent Israel from continuing a genocide through an enforcement mechanism, it still sends a, a, a very significant signal on the one hand, for, for starters, it continues to isolate the United States and Israel politically on the global stage. And more significantly, it empowers other states that are ready to hold Israel to account to prosecute is accused Israeli war criminals within their own national courts under universal jurisdiction, as well as to impose boycott, as well as to um, re refrain from continuing to sell arms to Israel. Nora Erekat, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.